touch points touch points touch points touch points it's so 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 important and i'm just going to try to get you to understand how this works and to do that i'm just going to ask you to look at this visual first and you probably might have seen this before uh anybody seen this before maybe just raise your hand now to tell me that you've seen it before and you're going to ask you know already what i'm going to ask you to look for on this does anybody already know Andrew's already got it. Okay. What I'm trying to get you to understand here is that your brain literally right now is processing around about 8 million pieces of data around noise, sound, touch, so many things. And it has to filter out that out. It's like a lint filter in a tumble dryer. It has to collect the things that you don't need and then delivers into your central core the things that are important. And that narrows down to about 128 bits of data. That's all you can process. And this is what's happening to your customers all the time. Can anybody see anything about the FedEx logo here that's jumping off the page? Andrew's obviously got it. Alex has got it. And you're gonna now, some of you are gonna be really hacked off here that you can't see what other people can see. I'd now like you to look for a directional shape that goes from left to right as a direction of travel. Craig's just got it. Anybody else struggling with this in terms of what you still can't see? Anybody still missing it? And it hands up if you still can't see it. Yorande, Miranda, Tony, John. Okay. Uh, Andrew, help them out. Where is the shape that we can't see? Um, it's the arrow between the E and the X. Um, it's obviously a direction of travel is what they do with their parcels. Um, Miranda's just, it's just landed with Miranda. She's smiling. You've now seen it, yeah? Unfortunately, Miranda, from this point onwards, you will never, ever see a FedEx logo again without seeing that arrow. And the principle behind this is that all the time, your customers will only see what they want to see. No matter how good your messaging is, no matter how good your copy is, no matter how good your magazine is, we've just shown here that until somebody physically told you where to look, your brain couldn't process that amount of data. And you literally lost the ability to see. So for you, the challenge in marketing and selling is to be a real pain in the ass and keep giving people messaging. And the average at the moment is said to be around about a minimum of seven touch points, a minimum of seven. But the modern day marketers say you now need about 13 touch points before they're going to even take notice of you. And when you get to this example, what happens with the customer is that they will go through a journey. And first of all, they have to go through awareness where they have to even know about you. And then they'll be interested. And then from interest becomes desire and then creates action. And then once you've converted the customer, what then happens is they then become loyal or they love you. So even though you've managed to get them into your customer base and they become a client, You've still got to do things to make sure they stay loyal to you by making them feel loved. So this is where we come from, from touch points. But the really important thing with touch points is that you have to also give people touch points based on this acronym, which is the VARC method of learning. And all of you on this screen today will learn in different ways. And all of your customers will receive and hear and see things in different ways, which allows it to get into the brain. The first one is you've got to be visual. So some of your customers would expect to have a visual message. They like seeing things. They like reading things. They like seeing nice logos, flashy images. You need to put a message out around that touch point. They also need auditory. Some people like to listen. 
more than they look. That's why podcasting and that's why Spotify and Audible are platforms that people choose to learn from because that's how they like to do it. Your touch points have to convince visual auditory and then some people will learn via reading. They like the written word more than they do visual or acoustic. And finally, I've dropped it, but here it is. It's the kinesthetic aspect of learning, which brings in all the sensory perceptions as well. So when you look at your touch points you're putting out to your customers, if you rely on one methodology, you're automatically decreasing your ability to connect with your prospects. They've got to be visual, acoustic, written, reading, and kinesthetic. Appeal to all of those. And the other thing in terms of your communication is it comes down to three numbers. If you rely on the written word, the written word only is 7% effective. So if you just do a LinkedIn post that is purely text, it's only likely to be 7% effective. If you can bring in the words to tonality and start to speak people, to people, it increases that by five times. This is a study by Albert Mahabrian. He's done lots of study on this. And just by putting text into words, ringing people, putting audio on something, you increase the learning ability by 38%. And finally, when we go and see people or put body language into it, the other 55%, so it's 100% effective, becomes normality, like we're doing now. We've got written, we've got auditory, and you can see me. And I'm trying to learn with you in lots of different ways, by sheet screen sharing, by having visual prompts, and obviously using your ears. So that's the principle of the Ada message that we have to get people to be aware, interested, and then we can start to work on selling. So just some simple things that we could use. Um, I love color and I have a particular brand color, which is my pink. And you'll see my pink color all the way through my social. So if you're sending something to somebody, you might want a nice pink envelope. And I love lumpy mail. I think it's a really, really good tactic to get people's attention. So this is the first part of the wedge here. The touch points you might want to, you might still want to send somebody a card. You might want to send somebody a postcard. This is somebody marketing a property that we work for in the Lake District. And we send them a postcard saying, wish you were here. You might want to send somebody an invitation. There's a lovely personalized invitation there to an event in York. See the personalization on, on the top of it there, how it grabs my attention. Or you might want to do some of the stuff that John does, which is send somebody a really nice calendar a metal calendar of the year there you go there's his logo on the bottom there mr merchandise nice little plug for mr merchandise there he sends <laughs> these out or if you have gone networking you might get one of these all these subliminal messages to remind you that things exist so what are you doing i'd love you to really go away and think the customer journey that you're playing with as prospects how do you communicate with them in a visual, auditory, written, and in a sensory kinesthetic way for them to pay attention to you. If you're only relying on one, then you're probably going to come a cropper. And then once you've got the customer, how do we play with that loyalty? What do you then do? I want you to really have a system, and Miranda's got a system already for her reciprocity and referral. So just some simple ideas here. Here's the book I'll send one of my coaching clients. It's a written book. John does these for me. It's my branded. It's got a pen on it. And on the inside, I have a little message in there. It says, think in ink. And it's just a little message from me to them to say, hey, I like you as a customer. I'd like to make sure we've got a bond of trust here. And this is my book that we can start to work on our methodologies with. Find out when their birthday is. It's such a simple thing. Hey, Craig, by the way, when's your birthday? 
That goes in your CRM system. A week before it's Craig's birthday, it pops up and says, send Craig a message. Depending on how much he spent with you, you might want to send him a Fortnum Mason uh, hamper or send him an Audi tea bag. Up to you. <laughs> but thank him for the business and make sure he knows that you're thinking about him. Maybe you can add in something like this, Miranda. When you're sending those thank yous, you just send a card with it. To say, hey, Debbie, thank you so much for that referral. I think you're awesome. When things like this come along, it shows that you've really put some time and energy into that. Mm. This is one of my clients that I get data from, Corp Data down in Devon. What do they do in Devon? They make loads of fudge. So whenever we buy data off, then they send me a nice little pack of fudge and say, thank you for the business. That's really kinesthetic. Comes in, nice branding, goes in the mouth. I remember fudge. Every time I think about fudge, I think about Corp Data. Clever stuff. Seasonality. Christmas. Have you got a Christmas plan for this year? If you haven't got a Christmas plan, what's your Christmas plan? Or maybe you have a New Year plan. And just some other things I do a lot, which is to use uh, voice and video messaging a lot. A voice message, you can just do it quickly on WhatsApp or a messenger or an audio file. And you just check in and say, hey, Alex, I couldn't help but notice this week you've had a great win on LinkedIn. Congratulations. I want to cheer for you. I want to appreciate you. That comes in on his voice note. Feels good. Or amplify it even more and put some video on it. Get used to being raw on video. Just go live on video, record the video, and just send it. Don't make it perfect because then it comes across as all a bit too, too staged and a bit too professional. Just send a video. But remember, all your prospects are doing the FedEx thing. They can't see what they need to see until it becomes more clear. And you've just got to keep pushing on with your message for all that to resonate and land. I think those are all my props and all my post-its. Uh, that is everything I want to tell you today. It's a really quick message, but just to really think about your touch points. And I'd love you to look at the last customer you just won this morning, that referral, that exhibition contact and then put them in a sort of a almost a graph and say here's my prospect how did they get to learn about me as a brand what happened then went to my website was it fit for purpose does all my messaging join up is my value proposition the same on my website as it is on my social as it on my business card in my email footer if i was to put a sniper's gun around your whole business could I find in those sites the same message everywhere? If not, what can you do about it? And once you've won that customer, how do you really lock in their loyalty? Because complacency means comfort. And I guarantee you, if you, if you win a customer, there's people like me or Vicky doing their best to nick that customer off you and give them to somebody else because you're not making them feel valued and loved enough. So again, once you've got the customer, think about seven touch points in the year. How can I keep touching that customer seven times with an e-newsletter, the LinkedIn post you tag them on, a birthday card, a Christmas card, a thank you card? That's seven tactics immediately that you can do. Have you got that nailed on to every single one of your customers? If not, all that work you've done to get them, they'll just think, do you know what? I don't, I don't think Debbie loves me. I'm going to go somewhere else because I just don't feel the love. She put all that effort into making me feel amazing. And then once I came into her basket, she just forgot about me. So all the way through, the expectation you see at the front has to be delivered at the end when you've got the customer. And you've got to keep that loyalty all locked in. So that's the challenge to you. Touch points, touch points, touch points. Have you got them? Do they link visually, acoustically, written and kinesthetically? If not, what can you do about it? And then once you've got the customer, what systems have you got to make sure they stay in love with you and you make them feel loved?